All right, we're going. So what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the sit down episode six. And today's going to be a fun little episode because we're all over the world pretty much right now, or at least the Northeast, <laughs> right? We got Buffalo, we got Brooklyn in the house, we got Boston in the house. Actually, we got Colorado in the house too. So yeah. I am welcomed by Anthony from Brothers from Brooklyn, the boss from Guido, as well as Kyle from Conquer the Kitchen. That's everybody's Instagram handle and everything will be in the description to follow everybody. But let's kind of get right to it. What's everybody doing? How's everybody dealing with quarantine? Well, taking it day by day. That's all we can do, I guess. You know what I mean? Eating yeah, a lot of food, food, you know, and yeah. cleaning everything and doing what we got to do, you know? That's true. It's actually like really hard to diet because we're in the house. So like we're actually just eating just because of boredom. Like that's really like crazy right there. My mom and I yeah. actually shot within the last two days, four episodes of our cooking show. So we got, <laughs> we got beans, what do we have? beans and greens on the way, biscotti, espresso brownies. And um, we made uh, this um, bacon wrapped like spinach crostini. It's amazing. Yeah, your oh, mom's delicious. cool, Nico. Your mom's cool. Yeah, she's she's right in there with you, man. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. Now is a great time to like, you know, if you're like a content creator, now is an excellent time to, you know, just schedule, perfect. sit down and pump out those videos. It's, it's a great time. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. We're like even um going hard on TikTok right now, too. We just like had a couple of videos. We love that viral. TikTok. We're going hard on TikTok. <laughs> I'm too old for TikTok, brother. I tell oh you that all God. the time. On the bright side, we can all say that we're all Italian and we're all Sicilian, if, if not both. So that's that's all, that's always a blessing. At the end of the day, when I wake up and I realize I'm I'm still Italian, that's a great feeling. Agreed. <laughs> I agree on that. I agree on that's that. True. That's we true. We got to keep the generation rolling. I love you guys. That you guys are younger than me, and you like you guys really all you you guys just keep it going. I thought after me was over. You know what I mean? And like, it's awesome to see like even the younger kids like. You, yeah. uh, Anthony, you're living with your grandparents, or you'll be with your grandparents all the time. Nico, yeah. Nico's, Nico's mom's involved. You know what I mean? Kyle loves you his need, grandparents. You, ha like you I have do. to, you have to do that because uh, what I see nowadays, which is an unfortunate thing, is the kids nowadays they don't really like respect their family, and you know they're out doing you know miscellaneous you know things that you know we don't have to mention, but you know there's no respect anymore. You know there's no love and you no. know compassion the way it used to be. Like Class. back then. Yeah, back then you used to stay home with, you know, your family on the weekends and now everyone can't wait for Friday, Saturday, Sunday to go out and go be with their friends. You know, family comes first, I think. So it's really, really cool. Yeah, definitely. And we value that. All of us value that, you know. That's why, it's true. That's why, yeah, that's why I kind of focus on like making videos, especially on TikTok, because it's such a young crowd just to kind of yeah. show everybody that it's not all like party time and this and that. Because you see some of the stuff on there, especially like uh, big corporations making all this crazy content. That is, like, it's a little risky. I have a, I have a question to you guys. Uh, what is your like demographics on on Instagram? If you don't mind me asking, like, what's your age group of people? I think the last time I looked it up, it's a lot of people in New York City, Long Island, and between the twenty five thirty five age range. I like that. Yeah, because when I started, I had a mindset and a goal like to reach middle aged and older people because that's the type of people I connect with. So I'm happy I was able to do that. I actually have people who are like 50 and 60 years old following awesome. me. It's crazy, but I love it. I love it. I have like, I don't get like comments from girls who are 15 and 16. I get like mothers and nonas and aunts messaging me, you know, like, oh, you know, I love the page, things like that. I like that. It's better. I That's because you have that old school. You have that, you're <laughs> driving that old school from the way you were raised, from the older I, generation. I love it. Thank you. Oh, I, I mean, love that. I have more followers actually in uh, more New York than I do Boston, believe it or not. Yeah. How crazy is that? You know oh, that, what I mean? That's awesome. Yeah, well, I'm pretty awesome. all over the place. I mean, I, I'm more, a lot, majority of my followers, uh, I got a lot of Italians. I mean, a lot of people from Brooklyn, a lot of people from New York. I mean, me being from New York, unfortunately, I'm stuck in this freaking mountains of Colorado. Like, I'm like <laughs> no lasagna over there. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like the last Mohegan out here. Of freaking Italians, there's nobody out here but me. You're the first Mohegan. What are you talking about? You're the first Mohegan. First. I got, I got, I got a lot of different age groups though, and I have a lot of people because I lived in Miami for a little while, so I have a lot of different. I have uh, people I know when I went to school out there for a little while, so I have Hispanics. I have uh, pretty much every race, every uh, religion, gender. I mean, everybody's pretty much on on mine. I I don't really have a uh, specific type, but if I had to say, there's a lot of 
I would say there's a lot more Italians, a lot more Sicilians that are, and, and New York people that are on my, uh, my page more than anything. Yeah. So yeah, let's get back to kind of like everyone's like origin story. Let's like, let's start with you, um, Anthony. Like, what was like, when did you first create the Brothers from Brooklyn page? And then, is it, it's, cause it's not just you, right? Uh, so what happened was, uh, I think we've been doing the page for about two years now. If it's not two years, it's a year and change. But I'm just going to say two years. So yeah. two years ago, I was driving with my uh, my buddy, Jerry. So the reason why we call it Brothers from Brooklyn is it's two people. Uh, me and my buddy, Jerry, hopefully, you know, some of you guys know who he is. Um, he's not he's my actual. Guy. Thank you. He's not actually my brother, but he's like family to me. He's oh, I the, thought he was your brother. Wow. No, yeah, I mean, I tell everyone, like, whenever I'm hanging out with someone, literally everyone, I can't stress it enough. I, I say, this is my brother. This is my brother. He's family. I don't even consider him a friend. So he told me, he was like, we're driving in my car. And he's like, you know, we're kind of funny. We have like a weird personality. We're old school. No one really has an Instagram page dedicated to being real, being themselves, being funny, you know, being old, old school, old fashioned. I was like, you know, that's true. So I was like, let's try making a little Instagram page. We started it and we just like followed a bunch of people. I think like a hundred people. We, I said, let's follow a hundred people. Let's see if we could get people to follow us. It started doing well. And I had this idea to start doing rants in the car driving, but mm -hmm. I never seen anyone drive switching lanes on the highway, you know, mm -hmm. yelling at people cause you're pissed off and you're ranting. And then, you know, this grandma cuts you off. You're like, you know, you piece of shit. You're like, you get, you get frustrated. So I wanted that, layer of realness in there because i feel like people do six takes and it's got to be perfect and you made a mistake yeah. redo it i don't like to do that i don't like that it's either it's good or you know you don't post it so and be that's broken because that's i mean being from brooklyn i feel like when i watch him i watch everybody else i grew up with in my freaking day. the way we all <laughs> call each other and yell at each other and kind of shit. <laughs> but you know that's how we started you know because my buddy said try it out and I was nervous in the beginning because let's be realistic who wants to fail you know no one wants to try oh, put effort right. into something and then fail but I didn't have the mindset of I want a thousand followers I want ten thousand I didn't have a goal yeah. I just said I'm gonna go into it for fun if people want to help me and they want to shout me out I, I you know I love them that's awesome I'll add them to my friend list if they don't no hard feelings you know and I just pumped out videos every day and it's, yeah, it's another it's thing to do. It's like putting yourself out there because, like, not only do you have your followers, but like you've got like friends from school and everything. So it's like almost like that sort of like pressure to it too, or people are gonna play behind your back. It's actually funny because uh, I am a magician for like thirteen years. Like I, I carry know, this yeah. card to me. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you. I've no, been awesome. I've been doing magic all the time. I actually just got a message from someone. Hopefully, it's a show. But I'm not even kidding. That was weird. But uh, I do this magic stuff. I have like a magic partner on the side and I'm in Staten Island and Brooklyn. And instead of people saying, wow, are you this magician? They're like, Oh my God, it's brother Anthony. I'm like, I don't want you to know my Instagram. I want you to know, like it's me from magic, but it's, it's funny what people know you from. It's crazy. Yeah. That's cool. I like that. Even both, yeah. you know, you know, yeah. What got yeah. You into magic? What got me into magic? Uh, I've been doing magic. I'm 21 years old. Uh, I started magic 12 years ago. I was in Florida with my family, Disney World, and then we went to a place called Downtown Disney, walked into one of these magic shops. This guy was doing a baby card trick, 52 pieces of paper, 52 cards in a deck, and just that little deck of cards, he was doing it to 30 people, and he controlled 30, 40 people, and all these people forgot about money issues, you know, potential divorces, you know, uh, you know debts in a family, you know. God forbid, you know, cancers and all these sad things, like horrible things. He made everyone forget about all the sad stuff in the world. And he made them feel positive and happy. And, oh, my God, how did you do that trick? And I always wanted to bring positive things and positive uh, feelings to people. So that's why I got into magic. That's how it started me. Because I was amazed at how he conveyed such a positive. Forget their troubles. So I wanted to uh, pursue magic. Kind of a weird story. No, that's all right. Awesome. You know, that's your niche. You know what I mean? So I don't, everybody knows I don't cook. So, so when I need some food, I'm just going to say, Hey, Anthony, make some abracadabra some uh, lasagna on my nook out there. <laughs> oh my God. That's you cool. always get, 
you always get those, you know, make my wife disappear. You know, I'll be yeah. like, I can't do it. Like, you have to have jokes. So, like, if someone says, make my wife disappear, instead of just saying, oh, yeah, you know, I try to, like, hit them with, like, I can't, but my uncle's in the mafia. He could make, you know, yeah, your wife right, disappear. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> uh, so, Italians can make it disappear. We don't need magic. Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! What I about love you? Yeah. What about you? Gotta, we know. We say I, I can't personally do it, but I know a guy. <laughs> That's right. We all have a guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what about you, Guido? Tell us, like, kind of your origin story, because you're fairly new to like the whole social media world in terms of like your personal brand. Yeah. So, so I um like for me, uh, I did a lot of body guiding and stuff in the past. Um, you know, for businessmen, a few celebrities, things like that. And uh, I had a little taste of the limelight, you know, in my early 30s. And then I just, I just drifted away from it. And then just being, um, actually being like an old school guy, seeing like brothers from Brooklyn, everybody's from New York and there's really no Boston, uh, you know, hold here. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to come out as the Boston Guido because growing up, like, like my American friends, I know we're American, but you know what I mean. Like my American friends would be like, oh, that's the Guido, the Guido. And, and they go over to my house and, you know, we'd have the better food than the Americans. Even, you know what I mean? You know, like we didn't eat tacos. You know what I mean? Like my family had everything, pudding, cakes, cookies, cannolis, everything. My friends loved it. So everyone's like, oh, we're going to go to the Guidos. So then, you know, oh, okay. you know, it was just a joke when I was younger. And, and, uh, and so I, I took off with it. I like for me. I'm more entrepreneur uh, I like, I have a big heart. I'm a big guy. I look like a bastardo, you know what I mean? But you know, <laughs> I'll do anything for you. You know what I mean? Like I'm very caring. I like, I throw people's businesses out. I'm not looking for anything. I have my own home, you know, my own money. I'm not rich, but I'm not poor. You know, it, for me, it's fun. If I can, I've always been a leader. So if I can make, you know, make someone happy or help them or be there for them, that's what I want to do. And my ultimate goal, I've, I've always wanted to be in movies and commercials. So I think that's where I'm leading to. That's where I kind of want to, you know, get into is I want to get into like mom because, you know, the Sopranos and all those guys, even the Irishmen, like everybody's old. They need some new guys. So here I am. Yeah. <laughs> hey. That show, like I was telling you guys, that show Gravesend, I would love to make my own series. Too bad William DeMayo beat us to it, but uh, you I, did, I didn't watch it. How long was the series in, uh, in Brooklyn, I didn't see you know? It yeah, I didn't see it. I'm watching uh, Harlem, Godfather of Harlem, though. I've been watching that. Which What's that? It's uh, it's about, like, um, about the heroin trade with, okay. um, like, Malcolm X, uh, like, you know. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, check it out. It's, it's cool. Cool. It's about Giancana. Um, uh, Paul Palmitari plays, and it's real, real good show. Real good show. It's a series. Yeah, Forrest okay. Whitaker is the is the main actor, I believe. That's oh, it. Cool. Yeah, I'm hooked oh, back wow. on The Sopranos right now. Oh, I do that. I did that rerun like four years ago. So you gotta wait like another couple of years, and then I'll do it again. Oh, I, I whack it out like once a year. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, you got it. You got it. What do you guys think about the Jersey Shore? I, I, I have to. Oh, I loved it back in it. Like it. back when it first started, it was hilarious. Yeah, I love people, it. I people it. either hate it or love it, so I wanted to know. I, I, I love it. They're, they're so different looking now, though. That's what's crazy. Like, I like the old Jersey Shore. You know? Yeah, the women look a little fake now. I don't want to be mean. Yeah, they look a little so, fake. Funny story about the Jersey Shore. I remember when I, I first. Like it I moved um, to Ocean County because I was, that's where my grandfather lives and he lives in Lakewood, which is basically like 15 minutes from Seaside, Jersey Shore. So I was going to college out there and I had a couple of buddies that I started going to school with and they said, hey, let's go down. I'm going to take you down to Seaside. We're going to go to this club called Bamboo. Bamboo oh, is like wow. the Jersey Shore club. Yeah. So I go there and we're probably in there for like a few hours and we're, we're getting ready to go out and I, I go outside and I, I had a cigar, I wanted to smoke, so we go outside and I light up the cigar. As I look to my left, Snooky is leaving the freaking building. <laughs> this woman, so plastered, so like out of her out of her wits on alcohol, Hilarious. takes like two steps, catches her heel on her other foot, and face plants right in front of the freaking club. And the cameras just started going off. Like That's left, right. Was it while they were filming the show? 
I was like, what the hell is this? Hey, hey Nick, <laughs> uh, Nick, Nico, remember yeah. you, went, so the, what I want to tell you, did you see my Massachusetts garage, green, white, and red, the, the, the emblem? I think so. You know how my emblem is yeah. with the Massachusetts? I actually copied Anthony, uh, the Jersey Shore, because you know how, like, on the garage, they had the, the Jersey State shape? I'm going to see, uh, you posted it on your page? Yeah, it's on my page. It's like, you'll see, right, like, the, the, the Massachusetts with the arms. So I did, so do you remember the Jersey Shore on the garage? They had the Jersey green, white, and red? Yeah. So I did the Massachusetts green, white, and red, and so that's why I, I kind of copied that a little bit, but obviously Mass. You'd have that's to pretty look. pretty cool. You know? Oh, yeah, I okay. actually met some of the Jersey Shore in August. Oh, well, I'll at, get it. At, at the... At the Video Music Awards, um, at the VMA. Wow. Yeah, you went? Um, I, I, yeah, I, I got tickets. I won them through um, Sebastian Maniscalco's page because he posted <laughs> at the time. He goes, oh, be my guest to the VMAs. That's awesome. Hold up. That That's kind of cool. Is that cool or what? Is that a sticker or something? Yeah, it's a vine, like a magnet. So it goes That's kind of cool. Wow. So I had it done, you know what I mean? Guys, That's I'm about really to nice. off in a second. My service is uh, acting up right now. Okay. So I Nico, I didn't mean to cut you off. And, uh, sorry, guys. No, no, you're all good. Yeah, so I won tickets through that Sebastian Maniscalco thing. He was like, I'll be my guest at the VMAs. So I, like, entered the tickets, ended yeah. up being them. So my brother and I went to Newark. And it was funny. We get there. Um, we sit down. And then, like, a, like, maybe a half hour, 45 minutes goes by. And then all of a sudden we hear, like, because we're in seats. And then we see at the ground floor, people start screaming and pointing, like, in our direction. We're like, what's going on? We turn behind us, and the Jersey Shore is, like, piling in. There's, like, Wow, Snooky, Ronnie. Um, wow. the other, the other meatball, D I think, what's her name? Dina. Yeah. 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 Dina. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I like waved to Jay. Wow. Then I was like walking up the stairs one time and Ronnie was walking down. I was like, yo, what's up? <laughs> oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Is he short or no? I heard he was kind of short. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's about my height. I'm like five, seven. All right. That's uh, pretty tall. I'm, I'm really short. I'm five, five. Yeah. I think my brother's like, all. <laughs> we're all short Italians. No, Not me. No, I'm <laughs> How tall are you? I'm six feet and a half. You're <laughs> lucky. You're lucky, man. Jerry's actually six foot, but he's yeah, like Jerry's really skinny. Yeah, yeah. yeah, He's skinny as hell. What was yeah. I going to say? So, uh, Nico, how did you start your whole page? I want to know that too. Yeah, well, I do um social media marketing. That's my full-time business. So I work with business owners. I grow their page. So like, I'm always on the hunt for new clients and stuff. So um. Yeah, that's trying, awesome. Yeah, so what I wanted to do, it was only supposed to be a case study. It was going to be like, oh, this is how you grow a Facebook oh, man. and Instagram page. And then it kind of just took a life of its own on like within a couple of weeks. It was like, boom, a thousand followers like within a month on Facebook. And then Instagram just started taking off. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I see there's a lot of pages out there. Not a ton of them were selling merch at the time. I think Hardcore Italians was the only one selling merch. So I was like, all right, I'll throw my, um, throw my hat in the race and that's when I came up with the spaghetti shirt and everything. And now it's kind of just grown into its own thing. We do events now. I'm actually merging my social media business. So everything's going to be the wooden spoon media. So like, all yeah, I like that. Yeah. I told you before, uh, Nico, right. We talked a few times, many occasions and you, you got it. What that wooden spoon is a big thing. Like that's like, oh, yeah. a, you know, like that is like just a concrete trademark that, that is like the yep. leader, you know, I mean, and I, I it's, it's funny that's like the first thing that's like how it was like my dad's like all right you need a you need you know, like you need a wooden spoon and he makes me like this five foot tall wooden yeah, i'm spoon. waiting on mine by the way i know it's like, <laughs> down there's the basement <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's, man. it's funny like during that time i got the spoon i was getting it made and mike marino hit me up oh yeah i know the guy is a good buddy of mine too <laughs> Yeah, he hits yeah. me up. He goes, yeah, he goes, I'm, he goes, I'm always looking for stuff to do my podcast. Like, people do my podcast. He goes, and, like, always looking for gear. And so, like, oh, I'll send you gear. Then he calls me. He goes, he's, he goes, call me. So I called him. I was just doing some work. He goes, yeah. This was um, back in June, I think. He goes, yeah. He goes, if you're ever down to do a podcast. And, like, it turns out, like, that same weekend you want to do a podcast, my cousin and my aunt were in Jersey doing, a, doing like, they're working in Jersey. They coach soccer so they were working there so i just shot down there i stayed with them and i went to mike marino's house and i showed wow. him a picture had him take pictures with the big spoon and like that's kind of like it's always just been circling around the giant wow. spoon everybody loves the giant spoon well oh, when wow. i see it's, what, when i soprano's gone a lot movie con or whatever which one whatever they're going to be doing I'm, I'm hoping that i have my spoon there when i see it 
Yeah, it's another thing because I want to start. I want to start selling them too, but we gotta we gotta make them first, and then I was like, oh, "That's my. gonna be crazy." Because I remember because I made one from I made one from Mike Marino. I go, "Oh my god, I wonder how much this is gonna be to ship it." So we like wrapped it in bubble wrap. We taped it all yeah. up. I I take it to the post office. I'm walking in the post office with this like four foot wooden spoon. Everyone's looking at me. I go, "What do you want?" I put it in the thing. The guy the guy pulls out a tape measure. He measures it. He weighs it. He goes, oh, "It's gonna be like ten bucks." I go, oh, "Perfect." Wow. Was that's it annoying. Okay but... When I got there, no damage. No, it was, it was all bubble wrapped. I mean, it's solid oak. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's, mm, how that's long pretty cool. It, it depends. I mean, when we have wood, my dad like carves them out, then he grinds them down, sands them, and then he'll stain them and stuff. So it's a long process to make sure they yeah, come out perfect. I mean, it's tedious and stuff. So now we're trying to figure out like the price point for it and everything because I don't want to because there's a lot of work and time that goes into it. I imagine it looks like. Yeah, so I mean, we were asking people like at the festivals what they pay for it, and of course, everybody like at the festivals like, oh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you fifty bucks for it, and I was like, oh, oh more than that. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, we're thinking around like the hundred and fifty price range. I'm ready, including shit. <laughs> All right, man. You know, we'd give you a deal. Guido. No, I don't want it. I, well, I just want it from you. I want it, you know. I know. Yeah, I, so I want to do a video with it. If it's and I got to do it, you know. I know, and then we'll and then we customize it too. So we'll put the lettering on it. We got all the letters. So I'm thinking around like the 150 cool. price range. You could like engrave each person's with their Instagram and everything. Make it custom to them if they like want that. If they specify that, yeah, yeah. Cool. We're I like, like just just paint on and stain it, and I think we clear the whole thing so it's like cleared. So there's like these things and indestructible basically. But I want to get really cool. maybe in the future, maybe getting like a laser engraver, then doing like custom little spoons and then custom big spoons too. That's cool. That's a good idea. You 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 like that. You think up stuff. You know. Yeah, it's I good mean, to be uh. It's good to be like that. I know because like everybody does merch. Everybody's got the shirts now. It's like I want to do something kind of like off the cuff that's, and like. That's the thing. Want. Yeah, I mean, like I I got some stuff out too. I'm not going crazy with that. I just. I just did baby onesies. I put them on order today. Awesome. I'm not going to go crazy. You'll see those. I'll launch those. But I'm not going to. I just wanted a few things just to trademark me almost. Yeah. I don't make money off them. I just, it's whatever. And like I said, I want to get into the movie, the acting. I want to, I want to be out there. I want to help people, you know, whatever. Like if you needed help, I'd help you. Look, Anthony, if you need something. I mean, for me, it's like Thank you. All fun. You know what I mean? I mean. I know. I love that, getting that too yeah. because I talked to um, Johnny Russo, and it's so funny to hear his story how he got into acting and everything. Like, yeah, I think anybody could get into acting if he got into it the way he did. Oh yeah, man, he's he crazy. Yeah. But uh, what was I gonna say? The the whole thing. I think I I think I could be wrong, but uh, I think it's better to start these. I guess we'll call these businesses. I think it's more fun to start these businesses when you're going with like a blank canvas. Like if you go in it for money, obviously it's not gonna you're not gonna amount to anything, you know. It's not gonna be as fun. But you have to go in with like a positive mindset, a blank canvas, and you have to go in it just kind of for fun, as weird yeah, as it that's sounds. A, that's another thing too, because I've got my business, and I'm obviously I'm gonna merge it with the wooden spoon. So there's gonna be like the the fun entity, and then like the legit business entity, just to, yeah. Yeah. under one roof. It's more um control, but like long term, like I want to be like a really big content creator for like Italian Americans, like kind of like how Logan Paul does it. Not Logan Paul, but like how he's got his podcast, his vlogs, he does yeah, fun videos, stuff like that. I'd love to do that like long time. I, I respect that about both you guys. Like I said, both you guys are young and you're like into it. And that's why I like you guys, you know, I really do. You know, Anthony, I don't really know you. I've, I've known Nico a little while now, but like I, I see you guys got a great page. You put up some funny stuff. I seen your videos, okay. you talk about, uh, respect. I actually did a little podcast about a biography about myself, and I put you in it, and uh, and I forgot you with Nico, which I can't even believe it. I had it written down, and I skipped over your name, oh, but yeah. you know I love you, and I always, you know, we talk. But Anthony, I said, that. I I said to you, Anthony, that you 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 said something that my grandfather said to me, and I wanted to tell you, and I wanted Nico to listen to this, is that growing up, I love the Italian flag. And I'm Italian flag crazy, as you can see, you know, whatever. And, and my grandfather would say to me, okay, God, so you and this friggin' flag, you know what I mean? You're, you're American. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm Italian. Oh, my God. You're American. Oh my God. So when you posted that, you were outside with your nonno, you, you had the, the American flag out there, and you said, my nonno loves the American flag, and we like the, uh, the Italian flag. So 
I mentioned that to you in one of my in my biography sit down thing. You know what I mean? So it's crazy how Thank we you. think. You know. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah I was actually talking to. Uh, I was talk thank you so much. I was talking to Conquer Kyle, Conquer the Kitchen, and he was saying uh, he was describing his nono and what he was wearing, and it's the same thing what my nono was wearing. So I was like, I think that was so crazy how like everything is the same, everyone is the same. It's it's awesome. It's all the same. What comedians you guys like? Well, obviously, like Sebastian Maniscalco, um, so. yeah. Anthony Rodriguez. Uh, obviously too we did a show together so he's awesome mike marino but like kind of like mainstream like there's some actually like italian american comics that don't do any italian american comedy there's chris D'Elia. he's huge and then chris he's Stefano. funny yeah and then there's chris yeah, Stefano yeah. too but chris D'Elia is like one of my favorites right now yeah yeah he, he is definitely good i like i like uh rodia i met i like rodia i like the sicilian guy i do some things for him i like uh, uh uh, Lula Siciliano Leggiado, I met him, and uh, I like Giuseppe up in uh, Giuseppe MC. Giuseppe the MC, he's cool. Giuseppe I like yeah, him. Yeah. I gotta get up to I Toronto. Those guys. Was those guys because it was the same, you know. And and I I love Sebastian Maniscalco. I mean that, that guy is like he's he's really spot on. Mm -hmm. you know, Entenmann's cake and oh Obi my god, the Dude, you gotta you know? see him yeah. live. He's he's an animal live. You, you know, went to go him. see him. Yeah, I, I saw did. him once in Buffalo. Then I saw him at the VMAs. Dude, he killed. I saw him. He was hysterical. I, 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 I was starting to piss on myself. He did this joke where he was talking about this nonna when uh, he, he was like, my yeah. nonna was uh, on the couch and you know, the phone was ringing and he was like acting it out. I was literally on the floor. I had, we had to go to CVS. I had to go get like a fresh pair of undies because <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. It was ridiculous. It was craziness. It really was. Oh, my don't know, Maria. So, I mean, there's yeah, a lot of good Instagram people out there, though. You know, there's a lot of good uh, – I talk to a lot of good people, too. You know, just general, generally people. There's, I didn't think there was a lot of good people I'd be out there still, but there really is. Some really. people. Some people, uh, you know. Uh, then you get your uh, – a Shimoni, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I don't want to mention people, but, yeah, it's, it's all right. It's too bad that people yeah. got to be like that, you know, but we try to keep it positive and that's what we're here for. Yeah, that's the thing. I actually feel bad though. I'm sorry to cut you off. You, you go. I mean, yeah. I mean, like we just keep it positive. Like I, like, obviously we talk all the time and like, like we're always communicating and collaborating though. And that's what you got to do. You just got to collaborate with the people that are positive and that you get along with best. Yeah. I actually feel bad because, uh, I don't really communicate with that many people on this whole Italian thing. So I got to get on that. Like, me and Nico don't talk that much. Uh, you know, Boston Guido, we don't really communicate that much. It's crazy. Like, I don't really talk to people that much. Like, I get a lot of comments throughout the day, and I'm just, like, thanking people for, like, even sending me messages, you know, like, the hearts or the funny emoji, you know, like, love the content. I love when people do that, but I don't know. I, I got to get on that and start communicating with more people. <laughs> like, reach out to more people. It's, it's fun talking yeah, to I mean, but when, I enjoy we, it. when we do talk, it's all great. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So like to wrap everything up in a little bit, like what are some of you guys' goals like going forward? Not maybe not long term because obviously things change, but maybe over the course of twenty twenty after the pandemic and everything ends. Yeah, I mean uh Boston Guido, you could go first if oh, you go want. ahead, go ahead, you go. Thank you, thank you. Uh I mean a short term goal, just try to reach 20,000 followers. Once that gets to the 20,000 fan member point, then the crazy goal is going to be 100,000, yeah. obviously. Who knows if we'll ever get there. But uh, that's short-term goal. Long-term goal is just to work with, you know, more clients. I mean, I, I work with so many different people, uh, so many different accounts, so many different, you know, pages, uh, clothing brands, uh, Fabrizio Limoncello, you know, we talk and, you know, they send me stuff and, you know, I sponsor them and they sponsor me all this stuff. So, that's a, that's a lot of fun. I just want to keep working with people. That that's my long term goal right there. From BTL is fifteen minutes from me. So, but <laughs> yeah. I, they literally like fifteen. Yeah, I talked to those guys too. They're awesome. They're making um, what are they doing? They're making um hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer, yeah. Hospital. So that's awesome. So shout, shout out to Fabrizio Limoncello. Yeah. Shout awesome out. page. Awesome people. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. My goal is my real quick, my, my, my short term and my long term is the same. I just want to continue to help people and be there for people and uh, help other businesses because I believe business is the backbone of this country. And uh, I want to keep the, uh, you know, the reality, the respect going. And um, 
continue to talk to good guys like you, that generation. And, and like I said, I'd love to just get picked up into a, a movie or a commercial or something like that. That's just yeah, what I wish you a lot of luck with that. I wish you a lot of luck with that. Exactly. Yeah, to me. I'm pretty tight with the De Niro guy, the, di- the guy that does uh, Robert De Niro. The impersonator. He's on, he's on Buffalo. We live like probably like a half hour away from each other. Jesus. See, everybody's close, you know? Yeah, that's the best thing. All right, man. So, I mean, we definitely got to do this again. Maybe we do this like once a week during quarantine. We'll get some get a ton of new people in here. But um, thank you guys for stopping by. We can sell face masks now just to plug it at the end of the, end of the podcast. We have Wooden Spoon Face Masks on the woodspoonstore.com. So, we'll catch everybody in the next episode. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. 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 Bye-bye. See you.